As a parent, we plan to dance at their wedding, celebrate a promotion, look forward to possible grandchildren. The last thought we would ever have is that we'll have to plan their funeral. It took a jury four hours to convict these three men in connection with the murder of Simone Duran. The 28-year-old's body was found burning near a dumpster in Golden back on November 5th. And a Jefferson County jury found them guilty of first-degree murder and murder conspiracy. After a three-week trial that included 50 witnesses and more than 400 pieces of evidence, Abel Candy Gallegos, Alonzo Quintana, and Rene Francisco Rosales were all convicted of various offenses. Two charges of first-degree murder, second-degree abduction, and retaliation against a witness or victim were among the verdicts handed down against Galagos and Quintana. Rosales was found guilty of physical evidence tampering, first-degree murder conspiracy, and interfering with a dead corpse. On November 5, 2019, at the junction of I-70 and West Colfax Avenue, the corpse of Duran was found at the intersection of Nile Street and West 7th Avenue. The guys were charged around 10 days later. The district attorney's office for Jefferson County claims that Duran recognized Quintana in a lineup for a shooting she saw in Adams County. The three gang-affiliated males referred to Duran as a snitch. He, Rosales, and other people were to meet in a Denver home that Galagos had arranged. The two men then assaulted Duran in the back seat of a vehicle after Galagos had driven her to a parking lot and met Quintana. After that, they took Duran to Golden, where they shot her ten times before covering the body in gasoline and lighting her in flames. Around 1.30 a.m., firefighters attended a bushfire around Duran's burning corpse. Jude Galagos received the worst punishments imaginable from Philip McNulty for each of his nine offenses, including the required life without parole term for first-degree murder. His other convictions resulted in further sentences totaling 163 years in jail. In justifying his sentencing to Galagos, McNulty added, There is simply nothing mitigating about this case. I'll give you the maximum penalty, even if it's symbolic, because you deserve it. Before shifting his attention to Galagos, McNulty addressed the family of Duran and said to them, It is disturbing to me that she was murdered because she did the right thing by stepping forward to be a witness in an attempted murder case. According to McNulty, I don't know that there was any regret at all, and I don't think there ever will be. In this scenario, a life sentence is completely appropriate. You are not permitted to remain among us. As he delivered his decision, McNulty also chastised Galagos's friends and relatives who were sobbing in the courtroom. People are crying today, he remarked. Any tears that are shed should be for Mrs. Duran. She had no other option. It was Mr. Galagos. As he was led out of the courtroom, Galagos turned to his supporters and said to them, I love you all. In prison, suspended after the service of 75 years. An accused MS-13 gang member was sentenced to more than three years after admitting guilt for his part in the gruesome death of a Lynchburg girl in 2017. One of the suspected MS-13 gang members accused of killing Raymond Wood on March 27, 2017, is Lisandro Antonio Posada Vazquez. In September 2018, Posada Vazquez entered a plea of guilty to capital murder, robbery, kidnapping for financial gain, and taking part in a criminal conduct while working with a criminal street gang. At his sentencing hearing, he received a life sentence for the murder and kidnapping counts with a 75-year suspension. In addition, he received a 10-year term for gang membership. Wes Nance, the Commonwealth's attorney for Bedford County, said that he and Wood's mother increased the punishment after taking into account the fact that Vasquez accepted responsibility for his acts. Nance asserted that a life sentence was yet warranted. Even with the confession of culpability, the offense necessitated a fairly substantial jail term, according to Nance. In Bedford County, Wood's body was discovered in the 1700 block of Roaring Run Road. During Posada Vazquez's 2018 trial, the prosecution said that Wood was coerced into leaving his house by a drug transaction, kidnapped, and transported to Roaring Run Road, where he was discovered with 29 stab wounds to his torso, a severed hand, and a slashed throat. 
Prosecutors claim that Posada Vazquez was the one who stabbed several of the victims. According to the prosecution, the reason the murder of Wood was so terrible was because those accused took turns stabbing Wood because the more serious the wounds, the higher in rank the victim is in the gang. Nance said that the Wood family had already overcome one obstacle with today's sentence. For Raymond Wood and his family. It's one more defendant who has finally reached a day of justice, Nance said. Anthony and Michael Carpio sat expressionless in court today while Judge Martin Herskovitz prepared to sentence them after they were found guilty of second-degree murder. The 2013 fatal stabbing of a student on the grounds of Cleveland High School in Reseda resulted in the sentencing of two teenage brothers. According to the Los Angeles County Deputy District Attorney Scott Marcus, Anthony Carpio received a sentence of 16 years to life in prison, and Michael Stephen Carpio received a sentence of 15 years to life in prison. They belong to the same street gang, the Carpios. They were each convicted of the second-degree murder of Kevin Orellana, an 18-year-old who was not a member of a gang. Michelle Panetta, a third co-defendant, was found not guilty of one felony count of accessory after the fact with knowledge of a crime and was given a sentence of two years in county prison. The brothers approached Orellana on April 24, 2013, while Orellana was playing handball at Grover Cleveland High School. According to evidence in court, the defendants issued a gang challenge and a fight followed. According to witnesses, during the altercation, Anthony Carpio stabbed Orellana. According to Marcus, the Carpio brothers then collided into Panetta's car. The Carpio brothers remained still in the Van Nuys courthouse while Judge Martin Herskovitz read the punishment, according to Randy Page of CBS2. Before at least 2028, the two brothers will be eligible for release. To you specifically, I want to say sorry to what happened to your son. I know the pain you're feeling. My mom comes to see me and she cries because what's happening to me. And I could only imagine what you're going through. You lost your son. A gang member who shot and killed an unarmed college student in front of a Halloween party in La Habra eight years ago was given a 50-year-to-life sentence. Having been found guilty of second-degree murder in the killing of Leland Washington on October 29, 2006, 28-year-old David Anthony Parga received the worst penalty possible. Washington, a 27-year-old Cal State Fullerton student, was a semester away from graduating with a double degree in accounting and business administration, according to his brother. Willie Washington III explained to the court that Leland was both his elder brother and closest friend. There's days that, that the grief is so much that I just kind of muddle through the day. Uh, you have to understand who he was. He was such a great person, and, and the way that he died, the way that he died, he did not deserve that at all. Washington characterized his brother as a gifted but modest sports person and as a soft-spoken individual whose demeanor earned him the nickname Cruise Control on the football field. The victim's sister, Denise, and both of his parents spoke in court as well. This... He couldn't have been anything but a friend to him. He couldn't have found any other way but to make him a friend. The defendant was branded a coward by the court for approaching the victim and shooting him four times, seemingly out of the blue. This was a senseless and very, very stupid killing of a young man about to graduate, Bromberg said. The defendant's actions were about as ice cold as ice cold can be, and that's what makes you a coward, said the judge. According to Senior Deputy District Attorney Jim Mendelson, Parga murdered Washington because he belonged to a group that had returned to a party after being asked to leave because it was disrespectful to the defendant's gang. According to Mendelson, friends invited Washington, who had no affiliations with any gangs. When the party host asked them to go, he and his pals were outside. Washington was shot with a 22 caliber handgun by Parga shortly after, according to Mendelson and the bullets tore through his aorta, liver, and small intestine, causing him to bleed to death internally. According to Mendelssohn, Washington's friends were urged to get him out of there because they couldn't wait and call 911. Washington was driven by friends of the victim to the nearby La Habra police station. The prosecution said that after being transported, he passed away shortly after arriving at UCI Medical Center. According to Mendelssohn, Parga's DNA was found on a shell casing at the shooting site. 
She also claimed that a female witness informed detectives that the defendant acknowledged the shooting and that she was directed to dispose of his bloodied clothes. Parga addressed his remarks to the family matriarch because he claimed to believe the victim's father, brother, and sister had animosity against him. I know there's nothing I could do to bring this guy's son back, brother back, but I am, I am deeply sorry for what happened to him. Please remember to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and stay tuned for more content like this.